The objects that have captivated me from first crush throughout my career are supermassive, hyperactive black holes. The objects that have captivated me from first crush throughout my career are supermassive, hyperactive black holes. The objects that have captivated me from first crush throughout my career are supermassive, hyperactive black holes. The objects that have captivated me from first crush throughout my career are supermassive, hyperactive black holes. The objects that have captivated me from first crush throughout my career are supermassive, hyperactive black holes. The objects that have captivated me from first crush throughout my career are supermassive, hyperactive black holes. The objects that have captivated me from first crush throughout my career are supermassive, hyperactive black holes. The objects that have captivated me from first crush throughout my career are supermassive, hyperactive black holes. The objects that have captivated me from first crush throughout my career are supermassive, hyperactive black holes. The objects that have captivated me from first crush throughout my career are supermassive, hyperactive black holes. Weighing one to ten billion times the mass of our own sun, these galactic black holes are devouring material at a rate of upwards of a thousand times more than your average supermassive black hole. Weighing one to ten billion times the mass of our own sun, these galactic black holes are devouring material at a rate of upwards of a thousand times more than your average supermassive black hole. Weighing one to ten billion times the mass of our own sun, these galactic black holes are devouring material at a rate of upwards of a thousand times more than your average supermassive black hole. Weighing one to ten billion times the mass of our own sun, these galactic black holes are devouring material at a rate of upwards of a thousand times more than your average supermassive black hole. Weighing one to ten billion times the mass of our own sun, these galactic black holes are devouring material at a rate of upwards of a thousand times more than your average supermassive black hole. Weighing one to ten billion times the mass of our own sun, these galactic black holes are devouring material at a rate of upwards of a thousand times more than your average supermassive black hole. Weighing one to ten billion times the mass of our own sun, these galactic black holes are devouring material at a rate of upwards of a thousand times more than your average supermassive black hole. Weighing one to ten billion times the mass of our own sun, these galactic black holes are devouring material at a rate of upwards of a thousand times more than your average supermassive black hole. Weighing one to ten billion times the mass of our own sun, these galactic black holes are devouring material at a rate of upwards of a thousand times more than your average supermassive black hole. Weighing one to ten billion times the mass of our own sun, these galactic black holes are devouring material at a rate of upwards of a thousand times more than your average supermassive black hole. The dinner plate by which material falls onto the black hole is called the accretion disk. The dinner plate by which material falls onto the black hole is called the accretion disk. The dinner plate by which material falls onto the black hole is called the accretion disk. The dinner plate by which material falls onto the black hole is called the accretion disk. The dinner plate by which material falls onto the black hole is called the accretion disk. The dinner plate by which material falls onto the black hole is called the accretion disk. The dinner plate by which material falls onto the black hole is called the accretion disk. The dinner plate by which material falls onto the black hole is called the accretion disk. The dinner plate by which material falls onto the black hole is called the accretion disk. The dinner plate by which material falls onto the black hole is called the accretion disk. The process by which nature pulls in material via a disk and then flings some of it out via a jet is more common. The process by which nature pulls in material via a disk and then flings some of it out via a jet is more common. The process by which nature pulls in material via a disk and then flings some of it out via a jet is more common. The process by which nature pulls in material via a disk and then flings some of it out via a jet is more common. The process by which nature pulls in material via a disk and then flings some of it out via a jet is more common. The process by which nature pulls in material via a disk and then flings some of it out via a jet is more common. 
The process by which nature pulls in material via a disk and then flings some of it out via a jet is more common. The process by which nature pulls in material via a disk and then flings some of it out via a jet is more common. The process by which nature pulls in material via a disk and then flings some of it out via a jet is more common. The process by which nature pulls in material via a disk and then flings some of it out via a jet is more common. The process by which nature pulls in material via a disk and then flings some of it out via a jet is more common. In this image, I'm interested in where this white blob forms and if, as a result, there's any relationship between the jet and the accretion disk material. In this image, I'm interested in where this white blob forms and if, as a result, there's any relationship between the jet and the accretion disk material. In this image, I'm interested in where this white blob forms and if, as a result, there's any relationship between the jet and the accretion disk material. In this image, I'm interested in where this white blob forms and if, as a result, there's any relationship between the jet and the accretion disk material. In this image, I'm interested in where this white blob forms and if, as a result, there's any relationship between the jet and the accretion disk material. In this image, I'm interested in where this white blob forms and if, as a result, there's any relationship between the jet and the accretion disk material. In this image, I'm interested in where this white blob forms and if, as a result, there's any relationship between the jet and the accretion disk material. In this image, I'm interested in where this white blob forms and if, as a result, there's any relationship between the jet and the accretion disk material. In this image, I'm interested in where this white blob forms and if, as a result, there's any relationship between the jet and the accretion disk material. In this image, I'm interested in where this white blob forms and if, as a result, there's any relationship between the jet and the accretion disk material. This love transformed me from a curious, stargazing young girl to a professional astrophysicist hot on the heels of celestial discovery. This love transformed me from a curious, stargazing young girl to a professional astrophysicist hot on the heels of celestial discovery. This love transformed me from a curious, stargazing young girl to a professional astrophysicist hot on the heels of celestial discovery. This love transformed me from a curious, stargazing young girl to a professional astrophysicist hot on the heels of celestial discovery. This love transformed me from a curious, stargazing young girl to a professional astrophysicist hot on the heels of celestial discovery. This love transformed me from a curious, stargazing young girl to a professional astrophysicist hot on the heels of celestial discovery. This love transformed me from a curious, stargazing young girl to a professional astrophysicist hot on the heels of celestial discovery. This love transformed me from a curious, stargazing young girl to a professional astrophysicist hot on the heels of celestial discovery. This love transformed me from a curious, stargazing young girl to a professional astrophysicist hot on the heels of celestial discovery. This love transformed me from a curious, stargazing young girl to a professional astrophysicist hot on the heels of celestial discovery. Then again, when do we ever know where love's first flutter will truly take us? Then again, when do we ever know where love's first flutter will truly take us? Then again, when do we ever know where love's first flutter will truly take us? Then again, when do we ever know where love's first flutter will truly take us? Then again, when do we ever know where love's first flutter will truly take us? Then again, when do we ever know where love's first flutter will truly take us? Then again, when do we ever know where love's first flutter will truly take us? Then again, when do we ever know where love's first flutter will truly take us? Then again, when do we ever know where love's first flutter will truly take us? Then again, when do we ever know where love's first flutter will truly take us?